John Kreisman, there are growing concerns today that President Biden's recent airstrike in Syria has led to an escalating situation. This in the Middle East. It comes after a U.S. airbase in Iraq that houses U.S. military troops was the target of 10 rocket attacks. Uh, Dan Caldwell is a senior advisor for Concerned Veterans for America, and he says he's very worried about where things are headed. He joins us live now. Uh, Dan, good to see you. You write that Biden airstrikes have initiated an escalatory spiral similar to what we saw last winter. Explain that to our viewers. Sure, absolutely. So <clears throat> what you are seeing now occurring in Iraq is, is a result of the fact that we have American troops still in that country when we have accomplished what we've needed to in destroying ISIS's territorial caliphate and, and ultimately accomplishing what we needed to when we went back into Iraq. We shouldn't have invaded in the first place, but we re-engaged to deal with the ISIS threat. That's over. So now we still have troops in Iraq and they're performing a mission of training Iraqi security forces. And while they're there, they're exposed to attacks from Iranian-backed militias. And so we've gotten in this tit-for-tat situation where Iranians' um, militias shoot these cheap rockets. They're short range. You can fire them out of the back of a truck. And they hit our bases. They've unfortunately killed several contractors and wounded several service members. And Biden uh, responded with airstrikes in Syria against Iranian-backed militias. And then the same militias likely are responsible for these attacks against Al-Assad Air Base, where I served as a Marine many years ago. And so you're getting into this spiral where things are escalating, and that is incredibly risky, and it could risk us getting into a larger war in, in the Middle East, another major war in the Middle East, which frankly isn't in our interest and could really distract us from other more pressing domestic and national security priorities. You said you served at that air base uh, before, Dan. Kind of describe it to me. I mean, could, have, could this situation have been worse? Do you believe that those 10 rocket attacks there uh, at that base were aimed to do more damage than what was done? Um, I, I have no doubt that, the, that those rockets were aimed to do damage. Um, Fortunately, Al-Assad is a very large air base, and it was interestingly built by the Yugoslavs in the 1980s, and it's very hardened, meaning that there's these very thick bunkers throughout the air base. So fortunately, there's a, a, a lot of opportunities for troops to take cover, and these bunkers can survive direct hits from these rockets. And, and that's a big reason why, when we had the Iranian attack against this base a year ago, with much bigger rockets, the, in fact, ballistic missiles, um, there fortunately weren't um, Americans killed. There were up to 100 wounded, but there weren't killed. And that's in large part because this is a very hard base. But it is still a risk. Um, Al-Assad is in the middle of the desert. And with how it's set up, there are various ways to launch rockets at it from a distance. So again, it kind of goes back to the point is we have these troops exposed in Iraq and there's really no reason to have them there. Um, again, ISIS is defeated. Having 2,500 troops in Iraq um, really doesn't make any sense. And, and I, I worry that as a result of this, President Biden might reverse some of the progress that President Trump made in ending this war and, and pulling our troops out of Iraq and also Syria as well, too. Uh, let me bring you back home here. Finally, uh, reports now of National Guard troops being served tainted food while guarding our U.S. Capitol. Have you seen those reports? Have you seen the photos of the undercooked meat, moldy food and others? What is your reaction as we show some of the photos here um, that got out by a whistleblower? What is your reaction to how our National Guard troops are being treated here at home? <laughs> You know, um, when I first heard about this story uh, last night from a friend, I, I actually looked into it further. And some of my uh, uh, best friends uh, from high school and also from the military later joined the National Guard. And some of them deployed out here to D.C. And I asked them about it. And their response was, is this is only the tip of the iceberg. Um, a lot of the troops that deployed out here had to pay for their own food. Early on, they, they weren't getting enough food. Um, you had a lot of people step up, including members of Congress, to help backfill that. But this is just another example of, of, of how poorly a lot of these troops are being treated in D.C. And I think it goes back to the question of, you know, are they really still necessary at this point? Is this a good use of our National Guard? Um, is it helping really make the capital safer? And also, too, 
look, National Guardsmen are supposed to be, be part-time. These individuals are disrupting their civilian lives to support this mission. And I think that the least we could do is give them food that isn't making them, them sick. And I think it just kind of goes back to the whole absurdity of the mission at this point. And I hope that that after this week, uh, you, you really start to see the presence wound down and, and ultimately ended around the Capitol. Yeah, I don't think there's any argument there. I mean, the spoiled food for those the guys and girls, the least that you can do is not that. You're already calling them in there. Uh, Dan, thanks so much for your time. Dan Caldwell joining us live. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Still to come, there have been numerous reports about January 6th and what exactly happened. Yesterday, Republican Senator Ron Johnson asked that one question 